We're back on this Thursday. Uh, time now for our weekly Neblet Beard and Arsenal Legal Difference segment. Attorney Wes Graylap joins us once again. We're going to focus on uh, motorcycle accidents uh, on this Thursday. So, Wes, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mark. You know, before we get into the specifics of motorcycle accidents, yeah, you know, I'd like to take an opportunity to help our motorcycle riders out there. You know, uh, it's part of the iconic American culture to have uh, motorcycles on our highways yeah. and motorcycles are always personable people and they're enjoying their, their ride. And so we need to keep an extra eye out for them. You know, statistics have shown that because of the number of cars out there on the highway, our mind's eye is looking for a car when we're going to a make point. a turn or highway uh, so, you know, we, we, we're not looking for motorcycles, and we, we need to make a conscious effort to look for them. Uh, those are our neighbors, our friends, our relatives. We need to, uh, you know, help keep them safe. That's a good point. Keep an eye out open for those motorcycles. A lot of people, yeah, just kind of forget that they're out on the road also, and a lot of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Wes, what are my rights after being injured in a, in a motorcycle accident? You know, basically, it's the same rights that you have if you're involved in a car accident. Uh, what your rights are is that you have the right to collect. Uh, if you're not at fault, if there's someone else at fault, you have the right to collect compensation for your medical bills, your pain and suffering, your lost wages, your loss of enjoyment of life, mm -hmm. and any uh, disability that you might have. So it's in line with what you would receive in a car accident. Uh, However, motorcycle injuries can just be much more devastating. Yeah, yeah. A motorcycle rider, they're much more vulnerable, obviously, uh, out there. That's right. They are. Uh, and But they have a right to be on the road, and, uh -huh. and we need to protect And certainly the law protects them if somehow or another a motorist does not see them and causes an accident. Okay. Is a motorcycle accident different from a car accident? Uh you know, it's just like we said, Mark, uh, the, the injuries are typically different uh, because they can be more devastating. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, <clears throat> people tend to have a bias that, you know, motorcycle riders are uh, out there zooming around and not uh, paying attention to the law. And we see that from time to time. But that's no different than what we see in somebody driving, a, uh, you know, a fast car like a Camaro mm -hmm. or a Ferrari. Uh, sometimes we have rogue drivers, but their rights are the same. And, uh, you know, we represent motorcycle riders all the time. Yeah, I can imagine. Who's at fault for my motorcycle accident, Wes? How does that work? The person at fault is typically the person who violates a traffic ordinance mm -hmm. uh, or not paying attention. You know, you can run into the back of a motorcycle and smash it into the car in front of you or push it out into the intersection. Uh, so if you run into the back of a motorcycle, you're going to be found at fault. If you go through a red light, you're going to be found at fault. If you fail to yield, that's the biggest problem we have with motorcycles yeah. is that people will be crossing an intersection where they have a stop sign and they have to yield to the right of way, but they look left and right and they simply just don't see the motorcycle because they're not expecting it to come. So uh, people who fail to yield and who fail to see motorcycles are typically at fault for the accident. Gotcha. Uh, okay, if I'm injured in a motorcycle accident, should I seek treatment uh, if, if uh, for my injuries? I, I think so. Uh, you know, yeah. it's a lot different. Uh, the collisions are usually a lot more impactful and the unknown injury that may be latent uh, is one that needs to be checked out and treated. And our urgent cares do an excellent job of screening and determining whether you should go onto the emergency room. But if you're involved in a motorcycle accident, I strongly encourage uh, motorcycle drivers to, to go to the urgent care or to yeah. an emergency room simply because they're so vulnerable. Yep. Hey, this is something to think about. Uh, okay, you have a passenger with you on a motorcycle. Can they also seek compensation if, if they're hurt, they're injured? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, even if the motorcycle is at fault for the accident, motorcycle drivers are at fault sometimes mm -hmm. as well. And so, uh, you know, you're on the 
back of a motorcycle and your driver goes through a red light and hits another vehicle, well, then you can collect your damages. And what type of compensation can I expect to receive in an accident? Uh, for a passenger, it would be the same as a yeah. uh, driver as long as you're, the, of course, the passenger is not going to be at fault unless they reach out and grab the steering wheel or handlebars in this case. Uh, so, uh, you know, a passenger can seek damages for their lost wages, their pain and suffering, their medical bills, their disability, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're required to wear a helmet. So wearing a helmet, how does that, uh, how was that, will that impact my injury claim? It can impact your injury claim if you have a head injury. Let's uh -huh. assume that you have a cycle accident and you're not at fault, but you're not wearing a helmet. Well, then the court is going to take into consideration as to whether or not your injury was caused as a result of you not wearing a helmet mm -hmm. versus you uh, being hit by another vehicle who didn't see you. So uh, wear your helmet out there. I know that there's a lot of people who ride motorcycles <laughs> who don't like to wear their helmets. But, yeah. uh, but just be aware that you can get seriously injured and lose your rights to make part of your claim. Okay, got gotcha, you, Wes. We'll continue this talk uh, next week. If people have some questions from, from this discussion, the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, call us at Nebula Beard Narsino, 561-2500. I got it. Wes, thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. All right, we have more to come, so stay right.